Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have invited my friend Yuan to give us an introduction to regression discontinuity design or RDD. Yuan will talk about the concepts of it and also go over implementation of RDD using an example from DoorDash. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so today we're going to talk about another method for causal inference, natural experiments. In everyday language, natural experiments often refer to things that only happen once in a lifetime, like the fall of the Berlin Wall. But for causal inference, what makes them useful is not how rarely they happen, but when natural experiments happen, the universe randomizes something for us. Um, that sounds pretty abstract. So, um, and then there are many ways natural experiments can happen. Today, we're going to focus on one such example regression discontinuity. And we'll take a look at how we can use this method uh, to solve a business problem at DoorDash. Okay, so for DoorDash, a hungry customer is an angry customer that may never order from a platform again, or maybe just order less in the future. Uh, as a result, late orders will have a negative impact on customer lifetime values. What can DoorDash do to make it slightly better for customers receiving late orders. So currently, DoorDash issues a refund to orders that arrive more than 30 minutes late. Um, because DoorDash has to pay those refunds out of their pocket, it is fair for them to ask, um, how much does this investment save customer lifetime values? Um, so um, how do we answer this question? How do we measure the impact of refunding on DoorDash customer lifetime values. One thought is maybe we can run an A-B test and randomly assign some customers into getting a refund and others into not getting a refund. But that would be really unfair. Um, someone um, whose order arrived two hours late may get nothing and someone whose order uh, maybe is just one minute late and they receive a refund. And if they found out about this little experiment, that will hurt DoorDash's reputation. Okay, so with A-B testing out of the window, what else can we do? Perhaps we can look at the data and see what the lifetime average lifetime value is for customers who got a refund and then compare that with the average lifetime value of customers who um, didn't get a refund. Maybe um, the difference between those two averages is the treatment uh, effect of refunding that we are looking for. But something looks really strange in this graph. Um, it seems uh, on average customers who got a refund have lower lifetime values compared to those who didn't. Does that mean uh, issuing a refund um, backfired? Um, it, actually hurt lifetime values somehow, that would be a ridiculous conclusion. If you recall from our previous tutorials, you may remember that there's a problem called a confounding. Here, order lateness is a factor that can impact both a customer's treatment assignment, uh, whether or not they get a refund, and the outcome, um, which is their lifetime value. So, how do we put this into this context? Um, so we can see that customers who got the, a refund waited longer for their orders on average compared to customers who received no refunds. And because um, of this difference in average order lateness, uh, the treated customers are on average less happy compared to the untreated ones. Um, because of this baseline difference, even if the treatment has a positive influence on the outcome, we may not be able to observe it. Um, okay, so if we cannot directly compare, um, what can we do then? Okay, so this is not an entirely bad idea. We can tweak it a little bit to make this work. Instead of looking at all customers, we can um, zoom in on those near the 30 minute cutoff. So there may be a near loser 
whose order arrived、um, just short of 30 minutes late, like 29.9 minutes late, and this unlucky person will not get a refund. And、uh, there may be another person whose order arrived uh, just um, a little bit later than the cutoff, like 30.1 minutes late. And according to DoorDash's rule,、um, they will receive a refund. Okay. If we re- ignore this whole refunding issue, then、uh, this near winner wouldn't be much angrier just because their order arrived 15 seconds later than the near loser's order. So naturally, the relationship between the outcome, lifetime value, and、uh, this so-called running variable minutes late should have a smooth relationship. And if we see a jump after the 30-minute cutoff, then that could be strong evidence the treatment refunding has an effect on the outcome. Okay, so you may ask,、um, you said this is a, an example of a natural experiment. How, how so?、Um, so you can imagine, like in the delivery process, there's like some like random fluctuations. The near winners.、Um, Um, Dasher may have waited like longer for a red light to turn green、uh, compared to the near losers Dasher. So just because of those、um, random factors, some got the treatment and some did not.、Um, so for、um, near losers and near winners near the cutoff, we can consider their treatment assignment as good as random, and that. Um, creates a natural experiment for us that allows us to make causal claims about the effect of getting a treatment. Okay, as a data scientist writing a report, you may want to do more than just a point into jumps in graphs. You want、um, to be able to claim、um, just how large the treatment effect is, and here is how we can do that. So think of this as a re- Regression problem where we want to predict each customer's lifetime value based on two things:、uh, how late their order arrived and、uh, whether or not they can get a treatment. Um, so um, here, um, minutes late is,、um, as mentioned, a running variable that、um, has a smooth influence on the outcome variable. Uh, we can center it around the 30-minute cutoff,、um, so later we'll see that will make the model interpretation nicer,、um, rather than using、um, the original、um, running variable. And here、um, is an indicator function that compares、uh, an order's lateness with the 30-minute cutoff. It returns one if your order arrives at least that late. And zero if your order arrives earlier than 30 minutes late. Okay, so、um, you may ask,、um, there's a third term here, and what's that? So that is an interaction term that shows us、um, whether、um, the running variable might affect the outcome differently on the treated side compared to the untreated side. That's not、um, the main focus for today. Okay. So, what is the main focus for today? We want to find the treatment effect of getting a refund. So, imagine we are fitting lines、uh, to both sides of、uh, of the data points.、Uh, so,、um, if we plug in zero for the indicator function, we get a formula for the untreated customers. And、uh, if we、um, insert the cutoff for the running variable. Then we find we'll see that this line intersects at the cutoff at beta zero.、Um, similarly, we can plug in one for the indicator function and get the formula for the treated side. And this line intersects with the cutoff at beta two plus beta zero. The treatment effect lies in the difference between the two intercepts. In this case, it is beta two. So the treatment effect is the coefficient of the indicator function, or we can understand it as the treatment status. 
Okay, so um, let's see how we can implement this analysis. So we can generate some toy data in an ideal scenario. Uh, order lateness is drawn from a uniform distribution that goes from zero minutes late to 60 minutes late. Uh, in real life, orders can be definitely be later than 60 minutes, and the distribution may not be uniform. Um, so and then we can use this 30 minute cutoff to determine whether or not each order get a refund or not. Um, inevitably, uh, the predictions may differ from the actual lifetime values. So there is an error term capturing those um, like arrows that we make, and they are drawn from a normal distribution. Um, so if we plug in um, those values to the formula that I showed you on the previous slide, then we can predict each customer's lifetime value. I generated uh, data for 2,000 customers receiving late orders. And here's what the data frame looks like. Um, so this is the running variable minutes late, um, and I used it for data visualization. And um, for modeling, uh, I centered it around the cutoff, uh, which is um, subtracting 30 from minutes late, and then um, we can uh, build models based on this data set. Okay, so there are many packages in Python uh, that we can use to do regression. Here I chose stats models because um, it has um, an intuitive way for us to specify models and the model output looks really nice. Um, um, so um, the first factor is um, uh, minutes late centered at the cutoff, and uh, the second factor is uh, the refund status, whether or not someone gets the um, refund. And then um, the star sign means that we are not only looking at those um, the effects of those two terms, we are also looking at the interaction, uh, that is, uh, whether uh, minutes late affect um, the lifetime value differently depending on whether or not someone got the refund. Okay, so feeding this model to all of the data, um, we, we saw that the coefficient of the refund status is 9.49. So that is the treatment effect we're looking for. So that means um, giving a refund to customers um, will increase their lifetime values by $9.49 compared to customers who didn't receive a refund. Okay, uh, and we can visualize the fitted lines in this graph here. Um, so as we can see, there's an upward jump after the cutoff, which again shows us um, issuing a refund um, may have a positive causal effect on customers' lifetime values. But if you remember what we discussed before, didn't we see we only want to compare near losers and near winners near the 30 minute cutoff? Okay, so we can do that, and let me show you how. Um, so um, we can set a bandwidth around the cutoff, like five minutes, and orders um, outside of the bandwidth will be discarded. So they will be assigned a weight of zero. In practice, you may want to give it um, some small values rather than exactly zero to avoid a potential division by zero arrows. Okay, and then, for uh, orders that fall within this bandwidth, you want to assign higher weights to orders closer to the cutoff compared to um, orders that are further from it. So we can uh, use like this distance to create a weight for each order. The numerator here is the absolute distance between an order's lateness and the cutoff. We want to normalize this. Uh, to a range between 0 and 1. We do, so to do that, we divide it by the bandwidth. And um, because we said that the further uh, a order, an order is from the cutoff, the weight should be lower. So we can subtract this 
a normalized distance from one in order to have that relationship. Okay, so here um, I assigned uh, the weights to all the data points, and here's a visualization of the weights. So as we can see that um, weights are exactly one after the cutoff, then they um, decline pretty sharply from the cutoff to the border of the bandwidth uh, to zero. And um, orders outside of this bandwidth uh, have um, zero weights. So this method is called kernel weighting. And we can fit the same model on the um, weighted data. And here is the new model output. This time, uh, the coefficient of the refund status is a bit smaller than before, it's 8.41. Um, but still, that means uh, this uh, refunding program um, has a positive impact on customer lifetime values compared to the near losers, near winners who got the refund have on average $8.41 higher of a lifetime value. Okay, so now um, let's uh, visualize the fitted lines again. So the red lines are fitted on the data in the bandwidth and the gray lines are what, what we saw before data fitted on all of the late orders. In this uh, case, they're pretty close. That may not always be the case. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, Yuan and I will go over some pitfalls using RDD in reality and other forms of natural experiments, such as instrumental variables. The next video will be our last video in the series of videos, Causal Inference in Data Science. So we will cover other topics such as resources to continue learning causal inference as well. So stay tuned, we will see you soon.